News and views from across the state, updates on the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015, is our focus on this episode of Law Weekly. It's another topical issue which featured prominently at the recently concluded 2019 Annual General Conference of the Nigerian Bar Association, which held in Lagos from the 23rd to the 29th of August. On this edition of the program, we bring you some of the highlights from that session. We also have the highlights from the induction program organized by the body of senior advocates of Nigeria, Bosan, for the new silks, plus our weekly recap of some of the top stories we tracked at the courtrooms. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shieli. The Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 is a fundamental legislation, and this panel shared perspectives from across the different regions which make up the country. The panel was chaired by former Attorney General of the Federation, senior advocate of Nigeria, Bayojo, who during his time in office between 2003 and 2004 set up a committee to work on the first draft of the act. The chief judge of the FCT High Court Abuja is represented here by a judge of the court who shares the perspective from the capital city. The ACJ is a bulky piece of legislation and it is not possible to implement all of the provisions at the same time. Now, uh, section 34 talks about magistrates paying visits to detention centers, maybe police stations and all of that. Now what the FCT has done in that area is to designate chief magistrates or even other magistrates who go uh, to pay routine visits, monthly visits as it were, to police stations. Uh, to basically oversight what is happening, find out people who are in detention, uh, whether they've been granted bail and if not, why? And of course the magistrates are also empowered there and then to either direct that charges be preferred or bail be granted. And that's been quite effective and of course the magistrates turn in uh, their inspection reports with a template that was designed by the Administration of Criminal Justice Committee. His Lordship is quite impressed about that. But he also highlighted the fact that some police stations have been recalcitrant, if you like, and uh, they sometimes outrightly deny access to magistrates to carry out this important statutory responsibility. So we all need to look out for what to do. Uh, the second point has to do with the Central uh, Criminal Record Registry, which ought to contain data of people that have been convicted and all of that. But it doesn't seem that there is evidence that in the FCT that is being complied with just yet. Now, there is a provision in the act that uh, we consider a gaping omission, and that is uh, the absence of any provision relating to leave to prefer charges. Now, what has come out in rather bold relief is that lame doc matters that ought not to see the courtroom are being filed routinely. Now, our contention here is that in a scenario such as we have, where both investigative and prosecutorial powers are vested in a single entity, the least we could do is to interpose an independent discretion that would oversee that decision to prosecute or not to prosecute. And our contention is that, unlike the CPA, where there was a clear statutory provision in the body of the law, uh, in the case of the CPC, there was no such direct provision. And what uh, introduced the requirement of leave in the CPC jurisdiction was the application for leave in the High Court Order of 1970. And we're thinking that we could introduce that requirement to complement the provisions of the ACJ in a subsidiary legislation which the ACJA allows. The National Coordinator of the Legal Defense and Assistance Project leader, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Chino Obiago, was a member of the committee which worked on the first draft of the Act in 2003-2004 when Chief Bayojo was the Attorney General of the Federation. Mr. Obiagu spoke to the issues of implementation and adoption. As of today, 21 states have adopted the Administration of Criminal Justice Act as laws. Initially, when we started this process, the, process, the, the purpose was to harmonize the CPA and the CPC, so there will be one 
criminal procedure law in this country to create uniformity and harmonization. Unfortunately, you know, the states are adopting. So it, was, it didn't have a national application. State had to adopt. Now the danger is that in adopting, states are amending or you know, um, altering the spirit of ACJ substantially that one begins to wonder whether the purpose of ACJ will be achieved when we have full nationwide application. And I'll give you some instances. Section 15, subsection 4 of ACJ Act provides that when a police is taking a state confessional statement, it must be record, should be recorded in video. That's section 15, subsection 4, or attested to by a legal practitioner or somebody independent person before that confession can be used in, in, uh, in, in convicting a, a defendant. Now, that is, ACJ provides that that is permissive because you use the word may. But in many states, ACJ, it is mandatory. If you look at section 9, subsection 3 of Lagos law, it is mandatory. The provisions, similar provisions in, in uh, River State, in Enugu State, in Kaduna is mandatory. In other words, in some states, it's mandatory to take confessional statements uh, without uh, or independent attestation. In others, it is not. And we do hold that Supreme Court, we affirm that where there's a mandatory provision for video, for video recording and confessions, the police must comply with it. It is not an excuse for the police to say that they don't have facilities for video recording. Another area that may have problems in terms of divergences in adoptions at state level is the issue of time frames. Now, ACJ has provided that under, the, under Section 293, that the, the, the procedure must start within 28 days, maximum of 28 days from the time of arrest. Then if they're going to be extension of time, there will only be one extension of time, extension of time. Now, if you go to other states, states, many states are adopting different time frames. In, in Lagos, for instance, it's 90 days. In Anambra State, it's actually 120 days. So there are divergences of provisions in respect to that uh, issue of remand proceedings. And that is the core of ACJ, because it's to address the issue of dumping people in prison on remand. Creating that time frame is important. The Attorney General of Abia State also shares his perspective, especially in the areas of challenges. I want to look at the areas I think we have challenges. You know, it is very easy to uh, pass these laws and practice them in centers of excellence like Lagos, Abuja, maybe Port Harcourt. When it comes to the rural areas of this country, it presents challenges. One of them is sometimes when you even post a lawyer to go and prosecute cases in far away places, the man goes there once or twice and comes back and says, oh, God, I don't think uh, it's going to be easy to keep going there. So we will still need, for some time, the services of those policemen, prosecutors. Maybe we need to keep training them so that in those areas where it's difficult to get to or where for lack of manpower, we are, you know, the lawyers in the Ministry of Justice may not be able to cover, it may still be necessary to have these uh, lay prosecutors. Now, I go to searches. You know, Section 9 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Law prescribes how searches should be conducted. And I want to say that is, it says that male, you know, men should be searched by men, females by females, except in exceptional circumstances. This is one other area where it may be difficult to get particularly females to search females, because that means that every police station must have females. And if you take a census of the number of females in police formations, you will see that it is skewed in favor of men. So we may still have situations where men will have to search women. I don't know how many women join them in roadblocks. So these are, for me, 
challenges associated with such. Lagos State has always set the pace in the reform of laws and in 2007 it reviewed its laws and the process eventually culminated in 2011 when it enacted its Administration of Criminal Justice Law, ACJL, which the Attorney General of the state says still needs some reform. Take for example the provision on plea bargain, which the Ministry of Justice has employed a great deal to speed up or to decongest the prisons. On the average, before this plea bargain, provisions were made available. On the average, there used to be between 30 to 40 convictions per year. But since we started keeping records from 2017 till date, through plea bargain, there have been 320 convictions. We have also we currently also have pending 900 applications by defendants for plea bargain. So you can see what plea bargain has done for us is that we are dealing with a lot of cases in a speedier manner than we would have had, we, had the defendants not opted for plea bargain. Now, some of the things in Lagos State which we are doing which is not necessarily in the AJCL, but which our experience has led us to, is that in Lagos State Ministry of Justice, we have what we call a witness support unit. We have found out that the major problem why many of these criminal trials don't go on is because the IPO has been transferred out of station. Again, you see that some of your witnesses get what we call fatigued by the entire system. Some of them don't even have the money to come to court or to come even to Ministry of Justice for what we call a pretrial. So the Lagos State Government has set up funds for this unit. And what does the unit do? So if we have an IPO who is out of Lagos State, this unit provides money for transportation and accommodation for that IPO to come down to Lagos for, to give evidence. We also do the same for witnesses who are in Lagos State, so that in, when the Lagos State Ministry of Justice shows up in court, you are more than sure that our witnesses are ready and, and the matter will go on. A prosecutor from the River State Ministry of Justice also shares the state's okay, perspective. So, um, I try to do a comparison of the provisions of the ACJ and the River State ACJL. Um, of course, our River State, the ACJL was um, drawn largely provisions from that of the ACJ. A lot of the sections retained, I wouldn't go into that. But I want to highlight a few that uh, there were amendments in the course of adoption. Uh, we have um, the pre-trial detention regulations. The ACJ provides for 48 hours um, for the detention of a suspect and also obtaining his details. Now, the River State one provides for 24 hours. We find that this issue of timelines, the River State uh, ACJL is uh, quite friendly to the defendant, I would say, because it has reduced the timeline. It has, in fact, halved most of the timelines. It is good for the defendant, but then it also creates his own problems. I'm in the field. I've prosecuted for, for quite some time, and I know the problem. So it's not sufficient just having these things in the law. We have to think of the practicability. Otherwise, it would defeat the essence of the administration of criminal justice law or the act. So there is a lot that needs to be done. And I'd want to say that where there is a will, there is a way. Because the, the, the will to do this, to get things right, is very important. The political will. If you have a governor that says, I am ready to stand by you to get things done and get it done properly, I think we are going to go a long way to actualizing you know, what um, the intentment of the administration of criminal justice law.